My name is Katherine Richardson, and I'm part of an international scientific initiative where we study the Earth as being an ecosystem in itself. Last year, we wrote a scientific paper called Earth Beyond Six of Nine Planetary Boundaries. That paper makes it clear that the biodiversity crisis is at least as important as the climate crisis. My colleague, Alexander, will soon tell you why. Alexander is a fellow biologist. He's sort of a free spirit. Alexander can adapt to many different habitats. Apparently, he failed as an artist. Recently, he's had more success demanding a transformation of the Danish landscape. Yeah, he will gerne flere penge. Vi smider hundredvis af millioner i forskning i landbruget også, og der er ikke sket en skid i 10 år. Hvor meget vil I have? Hvid. Altså. Not bad, eh? Thank you, Catherine. You see, Denmark is made up of 60% agriculture. And the silly thing is that 80% of that land is spent producing fodder for animals that we're not going to eat in the near future if we are to get anywhere near our international climate pledges. Though Denmark is often highlighted as a green pioneer state, the country rates rock bottom in terms of strictly protected nature in all of Europe. So what to do with this land? Well, business interests would probably like to see mostly renewable energy or timber plantations take up more space. But as Denmark is worst in class, when it comes to strictly protected nature, with the European nature conservation law stating that we need to get to 20% before 2030, we most definitely need wide-scale rewilding as well. This may look like a forest, but it's not. It's a tree farm. Only one species of tree grows here because we planted it. The biodiversity value of this place is close to zero. This is a field used for agriculture. More than half of Denmark is covered by these. Most of them used to produce fodder for animals. Due to the use of pesticides, fertilizer, monoculture and plowing, the biodiversity value of this place is close to zero. This is the sea. You can't tell from above, but the ocean floor in the majority of Denmark has been impacted by bottom trawl. Either that, or it's devoid of oxygen due to surplus nitrogen from the farmer's fertilizers. The biodiversity value of this place is not as high as it should be. Now you might ask, if it looks clean and pretty, why should I care if it's biodiverse at all? And well, would you like to live in a desert? A city with no diversity? Plus, biodiverse nature provides ecosystem services, and it's pretty difficult to live on a dead planet. So, what is biodiversity? Biodiversity is not only a measure of the species in a given area. It's also a measure of the genetic diversity within species or the interactions between species. To unfold this in a comprehensible manner, one could imagine something. Noah's Ark. Here we've got all of the species in the world. Would one say that biodiversity on the Ark is high? Probably not. In stark contrast, we could take the rainforest where the Amazon meets the Andes. Here we have it all. The species richness. The diversity within species, because we need more than just a few individuals to avoid inbreeding. And we've got many interactions too. Hummingbirds pollinating flowers, peccaries being eaten by jaguars, and macaws dispersing seeds. When we've got all of this coupled together, we've got what we call an ecosystem. If ecosystems are intact and healthy, they provide ecosystem services. Clean water, food, pollination, medicine, etc. But if the ecosystem has become too deteriorated, it no longer provides all of these services. We see it in the Danish seas, too polluted, overfished and trawled to provide the food they once did. We see it in Colombia and in Vietnam, where they removed the forests and now they no longer hold all the soil with the roots and we have mudslides and we have erosion. We see it in California and in China, where some of the pollinators have disappeared, and now we have to pollinate by hand. So, all in all, it's kind of a good trade-off to keep these ecosystems nice and healthy and keep the biodiversity high so we get these ecosystem services. Luckily, society adheres to the Montreal Kunming Agreement and the EU's Nature Restoration Law.
But in legal terms, according to the EU, this counts as protected nature. This too. And rumor has it, even a gas station. So we better all help regreen the right way. Eat less meat and dairy, so we can free up farmland to restore wild nature. Support organizations that maintain and regenerate healthy ecosystems. And avoid seafood that has been caught with bottom troll. Finally, go camping. Spoil yourself by being out in wild nature. Du har virkelig godt engelsk.